Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Eric Johnston. Today we are over here at the Mid-America Flight Museum and we're going to give you guys a tour of the Spartan Executive. We paired up with owner of the museum, Scott Glover, to give us the tour, but he also paired up with Steve Marini, the previous owner of the aircraft, to really get you guys some really good valuable information. So we hope you enjoy the video. Well, good afternoon, Eric. How you doing? I'm doing great. Appreciate you being here. Mid-America Flight Museum, April the 11th, 2019. Don't forget, don't forget your taxes are coming up pretty, pretty quick, just four more days, April 15th. But um, uh, Eric uh, called a couple days ago and asked about doing a walk around on the Spartan Executive. And I said, that would be a, that would be a great one. So uh, behind us is a, a Spartan Executive. They built, uh, I believe, 34 of these airplanes. And this happens to be serial number 28. Uh, this particular airplane was uh, used by Spartan as their demonstrator, and they kept it till 1976, and it's had a few owners since then. But when it was built, I don't know of any aircraft that were more sleek or faster, including military aircraft. Uh, 1936 to 1938, the airplane would, uh, it, it says the crew is 186 knots. I'm sure if, that, if you run the engine pretty, pretty hard, you can get that. But an honest 170, 75 knots, 200 mile an hour airplane, true airspeed at about 10,000 feet. Carries 1,000 pounds of, uh, of useful load. Uh, carry can carry about four, four or five people, three in the back, two up front. Uh, about 800 miles of range. So about four hours and a half to dry tanks is about what you have there. So for by today's standard, there's not many airplanes that'll do what this one will do. And it's just a beautiful airplane and a pleasure to fly. I bought it from a man named Steve Morani from uh, California. And I got to know him three years ago when I went to Oshkosh. He had another Spartan, not this particular one. And it was just a beautiful airplane. He's kind of a guru of Spartans. So I told Eric, I said, I I'd like to give uh, Steve a call and let him narrate what's gonna be the walk around on this airplane. So let me give him a call because he is really the guru of, uh, of the airplanes. Hello. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Scott. Good, good, Scott. Hey, you're here. Uh, uh, we're on a video with uh, Eric. We're doing a walk around uh, of your beautiful uh, Spartan Executive that you sold me. Actually, Actually, it's yours. Well, <laughs> it, 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 we'll just call it we'll just call it ours for now. So, uh, and, you and so you're going to fly to Oshkosh this year again and be with us. So that's really exciting. But uh, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit of the history of this of Spartans in general, and then okay. this particular airplane, and then if you can kind of visualize where we are, we're up at the nose. You just tell me where to walk, and we'll walk around, and you can talk about some of the points of the airplane, and that'll make a really really nice video. You've seen a lot of Eric's work; does a beautiful job. Yeah, it does a great job. So you've, you, the mic's all yours, Steve. Just, okay. just get with it. Well, you know, Spartans in general, Spartans uh, were, uh, were actually the brainchild of uh, William Scully of Scully Oil back in the early 30s. He, uh, like most uh, of the uh, oil executives, wanted uh, a high-speed executive transport to go around to see not only all their properties, but potential oil sites in the U.S., and the planes at that time were doing about 100, 100 to 125 miles an hour and would hold two people. It just wasn't really uh, conducive for what they wanted, so he had this brainchild uh, idea to come up with something that could hold maybe three to five people, and if he could get hundred speeds of 175 plus uh, miles an hour, you know, that would really shorten up the, uh, the distance in the U.S., so by the uh, by the by the mid thirties, he he had hired uh, some of the top engineers, aeronautical engineers in the in the world, to come interview, work with Spartan School of Aeronautics out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, he also attracted the uh, the uh, notice of J. Paul Getty, who at that time was a young uh multi multi-millionaire and and he joined the company and actually took it over in the mid-30s and really between scully and uh j paul getty they really uh advanced aviation uh, with top engineers and came out with the spartan executive uh which is uh this designation is seven w seven whiskey and it's a five passenger uh supercharged 
all metal low wing retractable gear high performance airplane and it was like the spaceship of its time ba back then everything was fabric and wood and to see an all metal airplane that looked like it weighed a million pounds fly people were just astonished that that they could get it off the ground and it uh it was a very costly uh endeavor uh, the average airplane at that time would probably cost you about two thousand dollars to five thousand depending on you know what model you bought and the spartan started off at twenty three thousand and went up to about thirty thirty one thousand uh by the time it's uh finished and they built the executive from 1936 to 1940 they built 34 aircrafts uh i think the combination of the depression the war and everything else that that was the demise of of the uh you know and and the limited amount of people that could actually afford that aircraft uh you know that was the demise of the company as a uh airplane maker they did go on to make uh trailers like airstreams but they were uh called spartan mansions and manors and that was very successful after the war but the uh the airplane it was extremely advanced for its time it's still technically advanced even by today's standards um very uh very high speed very beautiful looking aircraft uh low wing a pleasure to fly as you uh scott can probably attest to it um i'm a little partial after uh being fortunate to own two two spartans and uh fly uh quite a few of them and and been playing with spartans for the past 27 plus years it's it's just an incredible uh incredible uh machinery the uh right now there are currently about six to eight flying in the world there's always four or five flyable in the u.s it seems like at any one given time there are approximately 11 full airplanes in existence that we know of um, they're all pretty much accounted for uh, and they've all been highly collectible and considered one of the holy grails of collector uh, aircraft uh, since it's their, their inceptions they were pretty specialized the uh the airplane that uh is currently at the museum uh november uh 17662 has a unique history in itself because it was owned by spartan from day one all the way until 1976 so it was their test mule if you want to call it that uh, all the uh, advances and changes it is serial number 28 of 34 so all the advancements and changes that i've done over the years have been on that airplane they did uh played with uh different avionics uh different aerodynamic features power features um and so it was the test mule so it's really a neat plane so it's only had a few owners which is pretty rare for one of those planes the uh the airplane um uh, has a unique badge if you're standing up in the front you'll see on the cowling there's a gold Spartan badge on the cowling. Yep, we're and looking at that. What, what, what that signified was back in 1950, if you brought the plane back to Spartan Manufacturing in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they did a kind of a, a revamp or an update version, and uh, if it went through that update, and only a handful of them did, it was quite costly at the time uh, to do it, uh, you got that badge and what what basically the update was was they changed from 12 volt to 28 volt system to give it a little bit better and give you a bit more power and help the, uh, the the newer avionics at that particular time in the 50s you also got the wings flush riveted so you essentially got a new pair of wings um, and flush riveted which helped increase your speed you know there's you know the factory i think was quoting out it might get you about 10 to 15 miles an hour in some circles they were talking about gaining another 20 miles an hour i guess if you were up at 10 to 20 thousand feet the nice thing about a spartan with it's supercharged it does have a service ceiling of about twenty five thousand feet um i personally had it up to twenty seven thousand feet so it uh it it does go up there and uh you do get a lot more speed but it's nice with the flush riveting not essentially for speed what what i liked it for was when you're polishing it it really helps uh keep those black 
uh, polishing compound from building up around the rivets. Uh, the uh, it, it, it's pretty neat. Now the Spartan that you had also had was the first one to have uh, an autopilot. It's the only autopilot that was STC for a Spartan, and about uh, seven of the Spartans do have that autopilot in them and it's uh, a pneumatic it operates off uh, vacuum uh, and uh, the little, little little drums and it it really uh, it's vacuum actuators it's a little lagging but it's very precise once you get it up there and and, and let it settle in it, it is quite uh, quite pleasing and works well um, for, for what it is compared to today's uh, modern electronics the uh, also further in the uh, uh, the upgrade would have been uh, anything else at that time, uh, possibly if you didn't already have it changed from a full castering t tail wheel, they would have gone to a, uh, a steerable tail wheel, uh, but most of the planes were, were revamped uh, along along the generations uh, from, from new. With such few planes, they were able to identify, call every uh, current owner at that time, and about 80% were sold to oil executives, Halliburton, Shell, Texaco, um, a lot of the oil drilling companies, they, they, they all owned them, so they, they all were pretty affluent and could afford to, to upgrade and do the best for them, which kept that plane, uh, you know, one of the top leaders in, in the uh, aviation industry. So it was it was really a neat story, and it's just quite a quite a great aircraft. The uh, serial number twenty eight, which is uh, the one that is at the at the museum that we because it was flown by Max Belfort for so many years, we uh, we call we nicknamed it Max, and we call him Max. Um, and, and Max is just a pleasure to drive. It's, it's just a fun plane to fly. The, uh, it does have uh, dual, dual yokes. Most of them have the throwover yoke. Uh, so it's fun to it, take somebody up and just let them feel what, you know, what it is to fly something from the 30s. You know, it's just a great, uh, a great pleasure and joy to do, and I wish more people could experience it. Well, you've done a great job. I saw this airplane when it was in Santa Fe, and you've just done, they, they, uh, they got it all put back together, did a beautiful job on the engine. But I tell you, your polish job you did on this aircraft and the touch up on the paint and everything you did was just absolutely, uh, it's just stunning. You know, it, 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 it won you know, the grand champion of, uh, of its class uh, last year at Oshkosh, and uh, I'm just so proud that we've got it. I, as a little kid growing up, uh, the, the Spartan and the Staggerwing, those are always the two, kind of like everybody wants to compare the P-51 to the Corsair. It was always exactly. the Spartan and the, and the uh, Staggerwing, and I've had the opportunity to, uh, to have owned a Staggerwing. Beautiful aircraft, you can't say anything negative about it, but if you had to pick one of the two, there's just there's really no comparison between the Staggerwing and the Spartan. It's just a, this all-metal airplane, extremely fast, so little drag. And it's just a pleasure to fly, and it's it's not a difficult airplane to land. And some of the horror stories you hear, it's just a real straightforward airplane. But uh, Steve, we're excited for you to to come back to Mount Pleasant and do some flying with us, and uh, go up to Oshkosh. And uh, uh, but we appreciate your time on this uh, on this walk around. Uh, Eric's done a great job. He just looked on the, when you were talking about the panel. He was inside shooting that. So. Uh, Wonderful. I think he's done a done a good job. You'll be seeing this video come once he gets it edited in the uh, very near future. But uh, but uh, we really do appreciate it. There's one other thing. I'm just going to do a shout out. Uh, okay. I honestly would not have bought this airplane at any price had it not been for my friend John Mosley's development of his ceramic coating. And we completely you had it polished, but then we came and did a top polish. And then we use John's 360, and it's a two-part, like an epoxy. It's an A and a B, but it's a ceramic coating, and you put it on this aircraft. And when I come up here and you guys see me do it, this would just be sinful. I take my hand, and I just put up there on this airplane like this, and I encourage people to touch the airplane. When you come, you see the fingerprints on it. Three weeks later, four weeks later, you can just take a T-shirt and wipe that off because the fingerprints are sitting on glass. And, the thing yeah, and, that, and that's just phenomenal because if it didn't have that, if you put your fingerprints on it, Within two days, just the salt and the oils from your skin it's would turn it white. It's etched in the metal, and we've got so many polished airplanes. I've spent thousands of hours polishing. I'm just sick of polishing, but I love polished airplanes. But I'll tell you, uh, and he'll put a link up there to John's 360. We're a dealer, but I encourage you to buy it straight from John. 
Uh, it's, it's very inexpensive. I think it's $135 or $40 a kit. Two kits will do a, a Spartan and you won't have to touch this airplane for years and years and years. MEK won't even take the stuff off. Unlike any other coating you put on, like waxes or any other good coating, they coat it just fine, but, but MEK or acetone or, or soap will take off a lot of those coatings. But anyway, John does a great job. This airplane will be at Oshkosh, you guys can see it. But again, thank you so much, uh, Steve, uh, and, and we'll, be, uh, we'll be in close touch with you, my friend. Okay, thank you, Scott. See you later. All right, bye-bye. Well, folks, that was, uh, if there was anybody that knows more about Spartans, I don't know him. He's been playing with Spartans for years. I think he's got about 800 hours flying Spartans. Uh, and he's just done a, done a beautiful job promoting the history of it. He gives kids rides. He's just an amazing man uh, that I'm, I'm so glad to call a friend in, uh, in California. Uh, I think with that, we've, we've given you the, the pretty much the, the pretty decent walk around of the, of the aircraft. It's, it's pretty simple. People ask, you know, how does it fly? You know, well, that's a hard question to answer, but if you've ever flown a Beach 18, I think the landing and takeoff characteristics are very straightforward. The Beach 18 and this, the takeoff and landings are about the same. This is a lighter aircraft on the controls than a Beach, and it goes faster than a Beach. Uh, you get your, you know, you, you go up there and you look and you're indicating 135 knots or something like that, 135, 40, and people say, oh, I thought it was faster. All these radial engine airplanes, including the DC-3, anything with the radial engine, the Corsair, this airplane, whatever it indicates at sea level, you go to 12,000, it indicates the same. So that's where you get your true airspeed. So this will true out real easily over 170 knots, running a real, just a, just a moderate power setting. Uh, up around that 10, 11, 12,000 feet. That's how you get the speed in these airplanes. Down low, they're not that fast. But uh, a pleasure to fly, and we're just we're proud to have it. And thank you, Eric, for, uh, for doing this walk around. Thank you, Scott. All right, everybody, there you have it. Hope you guys liked the video on the Spartan Executive. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notifications, and leave me a comment below to let me know what you guys thought of the video. Thank you very much.